how can you save more money on your payment processing fees? Now, this is a question that I get almost every day. As the founder of Direct Payment, I help thousands of merchants with their payment processing. And one major question that we get often is how can I save money on accepted credit card transactions? So today I'm going to give you some quick tips on how to save more money so you can make more profit in your business. Saving money on your merchant processing fees is more than just calling your processor and trying to get, you know, some discounts and so forth. There are a couple of things that you can actually do on your end to save some money. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to collect as much information as possible on your customers. Now you're like, how does that you know, lower my fees. Well, the more information you send to your processor and to the customer's bank, the more confident they will be in that transaction. And there are certain categories of businesses that actually get a discount for doing extra security steps. For example, authenticating transactions with 3D Secure, which is like 2FA in the credit card world. Or if you send, for example, complete address for the billing address, complete shipping address, complete name, phone number, and so forth there are certain merchant categories where you will get a slight discount for sending a lot of information. So if your business allows it to collect more information on your customers and you're pretty confident, it's not going to affect your conversions on your checkout page. Then what you want to do is send as much information as possible. So first there's a, there's a chance that you're going to save some money depending on the business category that you're in. There's also a side benefit to this, which is the more information you collect and you send over the less likely that the customer will be able to charge back. So you kind of save a little bit of money on the dispute risk side. When the customer's bank sees a lot of information about a transaction and a customer calls in and says, you know, Hey, I never bought this or is disputing. They're going to give them a bit of a harder time. So again, that is a twofold benefit there. You're going to save money on the front end by sending more information to the uh, customer's bank. And you will probably get a lot less disputes and a lot less chargebacks because you're able to secure that transaction with more information. Now, another thing that's really, really important, and it's just wasteful is trying and retrying decline transactions. Now there are two components in a transaction fee. There is a percentage fee. And obviously if a sale doesn't happen, let's say you're selling something for a hundred bucks and the transaction that gets declined, that transaction percentage does not get charged because there was no successful sale, but there are always transaction fees included. For example, Stripe charges 2.9% plus 30 cents a transaction. So if you keep retrying transactions that are bad or declined or not accurate credit card information, what's going to happen is you keep getting charged that 30 cents or that 20 cents or whatever your payment processor is charging. There are gateway fees in order to attempt transactions. So if you try a transaction 10 times, you're just paying that fee endlessly. So it is important to block, you know, decline transactions from reattempting too many times within your gateway or within Stripe or whoever you're working with. What happens is that there are measures that you can put in place to block a certain after a certain amount of attempts. So for example, you can say after two attempts, we're blocking this card for 24, 48 hours, whatever the case is, you want to make these rules and put them into your gateway. So you can avoid paying these 20 and 30 and, you know, different transaction fees that you're paying for absolutely nothing. Cause if I try right now with my credit card and it gets declined, it's not going to magically get approved within, you know, a couple of seconds later. Keep that in mind is limit the amount of times that you try decline transactions. And if you do want to retry decline transactions, for example, for subscriptions or recurring orders, what you want to do is you want to wait a couple of days in between a decline transaction. So if you try today, it doesn't work. You want to wait, you know, three or four days before you try again for attempting to make it successful at that point. Now, as I was saying, earlier, depending on your merchant category code, there could be some ways to save money by sending more information. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with your merchant category code or MCC code, as it's referred is that you have to be categorized correctly because every business actually pays a fee depending on their vertical. So for example, if you are selling things online on a subscription, you may be paying more than a grocery store. So it is very important when you're signing up with your merchant account provider, or when you're working with Stripe that you advise them what your business is. And if they miscategorize you, then it's important that you advise them that that's not the category of your business. So the business category that you're in will determine how much 
you're paying in your merchant fees. So it's important that it's accurate. And if you, it's possible, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes I see this often, a business could be within two or three different categories. And what we do here at Direct Paynet is that we make sure that we choose the category that would give you the lowest merchant fees. So keep in mind, you know, to look through different MCC codes or merchant category codes to really find which, which ones your business is applicable to. And then you can find the rates and fees that are associated to that business category. So there are some merchant account providers that charge a flat rate. And there are some merchant account providers that charge something called interchange plus Now, interchange plus is cost plus pricing, which is the cost of what Visa and MasterCard charge plus a certain percentage. Usually that type of pricing is actually going to be more beneficial to you, especially if you know what's happening with your merchant category and you're able to choose the best merchant category with the lowest fees that responds to your business. So keep that in mind that there's two types of pricing cost plus or interchange plus as we call it in the industry or a flat fee. And it's not necessarily that the flat fee is going to be better for you. It is easier on an accounting perspective because a flat fee is easier to calculate, but an Interchange Plus, typically, if you're selling business to consumer, you're probably going to get your biggest bang for your buck by choosing an interchange or cost plus pricing. Now, last but not least, one of the most important things is to do a regular analysis of your credit card statement and really to understand your credit card processing statement, what the fees mean. Now, if you're working with payment processor, you can just call somebody up and they should be willing to explain to you what all these different fees mean and how all this works for your business. Cause it's not merchant account statement is usually a couple of pages with, you know, a page of various fees. My team and I at direct payment, we make sure that our, our merchants understand what all these fees mean and sometimes when we look at these things, we can find areas of improvement. So it's important to really analyze your merchant account statement. Google will be your best friend here. You can literally just Google what is on your merchant statement and Google will explain what that fee is for you. And if you think that there's a fee that's invalid or doesn't make sense for your business, you can bring it up to your payment processor. So the important thing is first to really take your statement and dig into it and see and understand the different fees. Secondly, you can get a competitive offer. I mean, we, we, do this all day and I do this all day, you know, merchants will send us statements. We'll take a look at their business vertical. We'll take a look at their statements and then let them know obviously how much money we can save them and so forth. So it is a good idea, you know, perhaps once a year or once every two years to take a look at your processing statements really in depth to understand the fees and try to get a competitive offer so you can, you know, optimize that way. So that is a very important strategy. As I said earlier, it's not just about calling your process and saying, I, I want a better price. When you go in and form and understand what these different fees are, you can recognize which fees maybe are not necessary and that'll give you a better negotiation platform to get better rates. And I have a couple more episodes on my channel discussing what each of these fees mean. So have a look and please, if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe for more amazing content on your payment processing and your business.